start with the name of God. Hello dear viewers, I'm Sahar Salehi and I'm a master's student in mechatronics engineering at Khaja Nasir University, Tehran, Iran. This project is related to our mechatronics course. The title of my project is Simulation of the Puma Robot. Project files are available in GitHub. I hope this project will be useful for you. Mechatronics is the integration of mechanic and electronic science with a computer or control to improve production and processes. The goal of mechatronics is to achieve simpler, cheaper, more efficient systems. Mechatronics engineers have a comprehensive view of the electronics, mechanics, computer, and control engineering, and they can plan and monitor for the projects. Few industrial products can be found that are not a combination of different fields of engineering. In mechatronics, mechanical and electrical components align with the control strategy are considered as an integrated system from the beginning, and this means simultaneous engineering in design. Mechatronic systems consist of four components. The components of the mechatronic system are the mechanical system, sensors, actuators, and the control part. Sensors the sensor is a device that receives different kinds of signals such as physical, chemical, or biological signal and converts them into an electric signal. We can find sensors everywhere and the whole world is full of sensors and their applications. There are many types of sensors available around us, in our offices, gardens, shopping malls, homes, cars, toys, and etc. We can also say that a sensor is a translator that converts a non-electrical value to an electrical value. All the sensors are categorized on the basis of their uses, applications, material use, and some production technologies. Some sensors are classified also by their characteristics such as cost, accuracy, or range of sensor. There are two main types of sensors, passive sensor and active sensor. A passive sensor doesn't require any extra energy source. An electric signal is produced directly in reply to a stimulus of external sources. This means that the sensor converts input energy to output signal energy. But the active sensors need external sources of energy for their response, known as excitation signal. To produce the output signals, sensors adopt necessary changes to these input signals. Many types of sensors are available. For example, some are designed to sense physical properties such as temperature, pressure, or radiation, while others can detect motion or proximity. From a control engineering point of view, the sensor is an inseparable part of the feedback loop in closed loop systems. Actuators In mechatronic systems, after we have generated a signal and when we want to generate a motion signal from it, we need to have a set of actuators. Actuator is something that converts energy into motion. It also can be used to apply a force. An actuator typically is a mechanical device that takes energy, usually energy that is created by air, electricity, or liquid, and converts it into some kinds of motion. That motion can be any form. So we can say the job of actuators is to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. We want to use signal generated by a microcontroller or any other computer generated controller for a mechanical movement. 
Types of actuators include hydraulic and pneumatic actuators, electric actuators or motors, which are divided into three categories, DC motors, AC motors, and stepper motors, and piezoelectric actuators and micromotors. These actuators need a controller to follow the go. The controller is actually like the brain of a robotic arm and executes the set of instructions we defined for the robot. The output of any system can be controlled by the control system because each element within this system has an effect on the output. Control systems are classified into two types like open loop and closed loop. In the closed loop system, after we apply the signal, the output of the system is measured by a sensor and compared with the input or the desired value that we need. And if it's more or less, the modified signal is sent to the system and this is repeated. Finally reach his final position. But some actuators don't require control systems and are called open loops. The block diagram of the closed loop system is shown. The basic elements of the closed loop control system include error detector, controller, feedback elements, and power plant. Desired output can be achieved and maintained by evaluating the actual condition and generated output. If the generated output is moved away from actual output, then this uh, control system produces a faulty signal. Once the error signal is added to the input signal, then the next loop output can be corrected, which is known as automatic control systems. Controller generates an actuating signal to control the plant. In this arrangement, the control system output can be corrected automatically to get the preferred output. Therefore, these systems are also named as automatic control systems. I want to introduce the Puma robot, Programmable Universal Manipulation Arm. Let's watch this video on YouTube. This robot has three revolute joints, so this robot is a 3R robot. It's one of the most used industrial robots because of its high flexibility. You can see the man will drive each axis with its teach panel so we get an impression of this robot. First axis drives the waist. The second axis moves the robot shoulder. The elbow of the robot is driven by the third axis. In this context, we use terms which comes from aviation, roll, pitch, and yaw. Roll rotates the tool about its center axis. Pitch moves the tool vertically. And yaw turns the tool left and right. So you get a maximum of six degrees of freedom. Simescape Multibody, formerly Sim Mechanics, provides a multibody simulation environment for 3D mechanical systems such as robots, vehicle suspensions, construction equipment, and aircraft landing gear. You can model multibody systems using blocks representing bodies, joints, constraints, force elements, and sensors. Simescape multibody formulates and solves the equation of motion for the complete mechanical system. You can import complete CAD assemblies including all masses, inertias, joints, constraints, and 3D geometry into your model. An automatically generated 3D animation lets you visualize the system dynamics. 
Simscape multibody helps you develop control systems and test system level performance. You can parameterize your models using MATLAB variables and expressions and design control systems for your multibody system in Simulink. You can integrate hydraulic, electrical, pneumatic, and other physical systems into your model using components from the CMSK family of products. To deploy your models to other simulation environments, including hardware in the loop systems, Simescape Multibody supports C code generation. In this project, I want to make a mechanical model of a Puma robot with three revolute joints and one prismatic joint in Simescape Multibody. Then I want to control the robot. Robot control is the system that contributes to the movement of robots. This involves the mechanical aspects and program systems that makes it possible to control robots. Robot control consists of three steps. Path planning, trajectory generation, and trajectory tracking. By controlling over joints, the end vector does the work. Okay, let's go to Simulink. You can see the final Simulink. Remember that all the files of this project are available in my GitHub. You can access all files that you need. I want to talk about the main parts of this project such as the mechanical model of the robot, trajectory and control of the robot and finally see the result. You see my model. My model has six links and three revolute joints and one prismatic joint. Links can be made both in Simscape and can be made in CATIA or SOLIDWORKS then added to Simulink environment with file solid block. The file format must be dot step. Properties such as density, mass and color of parts that are imported from outside the multibody and from CAT can be changed. But their dimensions cannot be changed. If the part has problems in its performance or coordination with other components of the system, it's not possible to change its dimensions. But we must apply the change in CAD and return to the multibody environment. It would have been easier to make changes if we had created the model in a multibody. I made two links, C and D in CATIA. You can see how to create these links.
have determined the robot joints and links. Now we have to enter the path and trajectory of each joint to each joint. How a trajectory on a joint changes depend on what happens in the workplace we like to see happen. We define the desired path in the workspace and give this to the inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics maps the path of the workspace to the joint space. Then we give the trajectory joints as input to the controller. Q1, Q2, and Q3 are angles of revolute joints, and Q4 is actually the displacement of prismatic joint. Here I have a simple trajectory for the joints. You can see revolute joints trajectory and prismatic joint trajectory, and you can see the conditions and the results. You can see the input of the trajectory block is time and the outputs of the trajectory block is QA desire and Q dot desire. I use the PD controller in this project. The output of the PD controller is torque and its input is error and error dot. These torques enter the joints of the robot model and cues are excluded from the model. In fact, there is a motor in every joint. DC motors are commonly used in robots. Torque is applied to the motor at each joint. The output angles is measured using the encoder sensor. The servo motor can also be used. A servo motor is a rotary or linear actuator that allows for control of angular or linear position, velocity, and acceleration. It consists of a suitable motor coupled to a sensor for position feedback. It also requires a controller, often a dedicated module designed specifically for use with servo motors. Servo motors are not a specific class of motor, although the term servo motor is often used to refer to a motor suitable for use in a closed loop control system. You can see simulated robot performance in this video. Now finally we can see the results, position of end effector in task space and queues results. Thank you for your attention. Project files are available in GitHub. I hope this project will be useful for you. And you can contact me via email.